Hello and welcome to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. It is Shenandoah 2045 day. We are back on the Zoom with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner. We meet up every single month and talk about Shenandoah 2045. That is the comprehensive planning process for Shenandoah County. We have been together since nearly the beginning, actually probably a little before the beginning, Tyler, when you and Lemuel reach out and said, hey, can we talk about doing a show? You guys hadn't really jumped in the weeds yet on this planning process. Yeah, I mean, we were two years into the project at that time, but still hadn't gotten into, I think public engagement hadn't started at that time because of um, COVID. So, you know, we had our survey that came out in March of 2020 um, and was out until September 2022. But no, we've kind of been going over this since the start of us actually being out in the community. And it's impressive to me that we have not really repeated anything. It's not like we've had to, for the sake of having something to talk about on any given month, we've had to go back and rehash something the same as we did uh, the first time around. We've had something new or a different perspective every single time we've gotten together. Oh, for sure. We have something new this month, too, Um, (laughs) because I think when we last left off, um, we had said that the Planning Commission and the board had given us direction to host a series of workshops between the Planning Commission, board, and Citizens Advisory Committee, as well as any interested individuals in the public. Um, and so we've gone through three of those workshops at the time of the recording. Um, we have two more uh, following the recording. Um, and I think they've all been very productive um, and helped move things forward. Uh, We're through six chapters. Uh, We have five more to go. So we're like right at the halfway point. Um, And I figured today we'd take some time to give an update to everybody on how the workshops are going and um, how, how things are kind of panning out. So when they suggested that you put together these workshops, were they specific in that these two objectives we think need a little more work, or did they just want you to kind of go through all of the chapters with a fine tooth comb and see where you guys thought maybe things could be tightened up or tweaked? We weren't really sure. Um, So, you know, that first CAC meeting we had um, on, sorry, let me pull the calendar up. That first CAC meeting we had on April 24th really helped, I think, set the stage for the workshops um, because it was a joint meeting with the CAC board and and planning commission those were able to attend um, and really to help give staff direction. And uh, it was ultimately decided that, um, you know, we've gone through different variations of format because of the length and the substance and everything in it. Um, And it was just agreed from the group that, you know, there's no magic page number, but um, we do want a document that is consumable and doesn't scare someone off right when they pick it up. Um, So there was, you know, a goal to, you know, try and reduce the pages, reduce the amount of words in it. Um, And um, I think they all wanted to be able to understand where everything came from um, as a group with all three together. Um, And so we had gone chapter by chapter, goal by goal. Um, and strategy by strategy to to look at everything. Um, and uh, so far, I think we have pretty good consensus on the six chapters we've looked at. Um, and we hope to have consensus um, over the next two workshops and, and any others that might happen um, with the final five and the rest of the document. I can appreciate that you are looking at it from a printed document perspective as well, because it would be very easy if you knew this thing was only ever going to be accessible online. It could be as long and as wordy as you wanted it to be because people can stop and they can go back and that sort of thing. But I have learned in the last several months that there are a lot of people returning to something that they can hold in their hand, something that they can open even as a PDF. And they want to see it's 43 pages and know, okay, I can get through this in the next hour. So making sure that it's accessible and like you said, consumable for anyone is really, really important. For sure. And, you know, we hope that um, we knew, we always knew that the report part, which we went over a couple months ago, was always going to be the most accessible part of the document because it's geared towards that. It's more visual, it's shorter, more summarized. Uh, whereas this document, the action plan, um, is more detailed because it's trying to help, you know, the people who will implement it understand what they need to do um, and what are some feasible ways to actually achieve that so that, you know, they don't look at something and are, you know, lost and, and, and have no clue on what direction to take. 
So it's it's been difficult trying to make a technical document also be easily readable and accessible to the public, but I think we're getting there. So you've covered five chapters already. Is that what you said? Yes, we covered five chapters already. Um, and I've got a couple slides I'll go through with Janet to kind of um, explain to her and, and for those who are listening what, what all has happened. So um, the schedule we've had is that, you know, we're hearing from the CEC Planning Commission board members on priorities and actions and ideas on how to consolidate and make the action plan more user friendly. Uh, we had big idea workshopping on April 25th and April 26th, uh, in addition to that CAC meeting I mentioned on April 24th. Um, we provided an update to the Planning Commission and Board at their May 2nd meeting. Uh, we also had a special workshop to work through the transportation chapter on May 2nd prior to the Planning Commission meeting. And then we're having our fine-tuning workshops May 9th and May 10th, which will have happened by the time this airs, but um, for us it's you know tomorrow and Friday. So uh, one thing that we've kind of said through each of these meetings is just recapping how we actually got here, which Janet was kind of touching on. So in the summer of 2020, um, CEC members split into chapter groups. Um, prior to that, so August of 2019, the CAC decided to update and redo the comprehensive plan. They then worked through a survey in the fall, sent that out to the public. The public then was able to provide feedback on what the questions would be in the survey. And then the survey was released in March of 2020. Uh, we had hoped to do public engagement soon after we released the survey, but we all know what happened in March of 2020. Um, so then in the summer of 2020, as we're working through what to work on, in the meantime, CAC split up into chapter groups. They agreed to a new format in December. Uh, spring of 2021, we st they started talking with town staff and community members for ideas for the plan. In the fall of 2021, so about the same time that Jan and I started having our uh, regular shows, we had our district information sessions. That following su spring, summer, we had our community collaboration sessions. Fall, um, the CEC member determined what new chapters were going to be in the plan and the new vision statement. Uh, they then worked through um, each of their chapters to develop their vision, uh, goals, and objectives. We reviewed all of those um, in a group setting in the spring of 2023. In the fall and winter of 2023, staff worked with CAC to host conversations and drafted a full draft that they were able to then work through that winter. They provided feedback to staff, and based on the feedback, we presented that to the CAC Planning Commission Board on March 7th. Um, and then now we've gotten direction at the April Planning Commission meeting to host these joint workshops. And I want to make sure people understand that, and we've talked about this briefly in some cases or in the past, you could have done this very much like maybe somebody buying a home to remodel. You could have looked at the whole picture and said, you know what, the bulk of this is fine, but we want to redo the kitchen and we want to redo the bathroom. So we're only going to tweak these couple of chapters and everything else is just going to stay the same. And instead, you basically said, we're taking it down to the studs and we're going to make sure that this plan has everything for everybody because it's got to last us another 20 years. For sure. And, and uh, you know, relating it to a house renovation, um, you know, we could have hired a contractor to do all that work for us as well. But instead, you know, we as a community chose to write the plan ourselves. Um, so it's a community driven, community oriented document. Uh, a lot of communities will hire a consultant um, or some outside group to help write the document. Um, and, you know, we wanted this to be a, a document that worked for the local people. So that was the whole intent with that. Um, and that, you know, kind of brings it to where, where where's the document come from? Um, so it comes from CAC and staff conversations we had with individual staff members, community members three series of public engagement and the online survey, uh, existing plans and documents that are in the region, CAC suggestions and staff suggestions based on those existing ideas that were out in the public. Just to help with organization too, we've been pointing out that, you know, the comprehensive plan is at the top of, you know, planning documents for our county. And our comp plan, when, you know, it's presented in its final format um, and taken to public hearing, will be in two documents, which serve as one document. So it's that report document we went through a couple months ago, and then the action plan, which we're working through in these workshops. Um, below the comprehensive plan will be our zoning and subdivision ordinance. Those regulate how land can be used and what property should look like in the county. And then there's our capital improvement plan that is a five-year financial plan for building new buildings and equipment in the county. 
And then, of course, our budget that the board goes through every year. We could consider that a yearly plan that the board sets for how the county should operate. It really is the base of operations. This isn't something where you're just putting a pie in the sky and a perfect world type of document together. This is going to be the roadmap. For sure, yeah, it's going to be the thing that everyone will look to as, you know, when when updates to our code happens, when aspects are added to the CIP, or when budget requests happen, they'll all go back to that comp plan that will have come from the community. Um, as I mentioned, kind of at the start, you know, people had said, you know, the report's really great, captures the overall vision, but the action plan is too long. Um, that there might be aspects that were lost in the action plan, we need to have narrative, a copy of the guide map should be in the action plan, need more information on acronyms and aspects in the plan. Um, when we did a survey of folks at our at our CAC meeting, uh, we heard overall there was no magic page number that we needed to have some narratives to condense and reformat a priority system, and we shouldn't focus on aspects that are beyond the scope of the county. There are also a lot of other ideas, you know, there's a lot of work put into it. We should be telling a story, um, have concise uh, statements and, and, and make it easier to read. So um, we looked through a couple options of how consolidation could occur, and ultimately the group decided on it, this new format where um, the goal is at the top of a page, and then below it are the objectives summarized. So if there were six objectives, there might be two or three. Um, and then under that are the strategies then summarized. So instead of strategies being nested under objectives, they're now nested directly under a goal, and the objectives kind of serve as like a overall guiding vision for that goal. Um, and so everything's on one page. It's easier for someone to read and see exactly what's important um, and who who's going to be working on things. And this is going to be around 100 pages. So we're coming down. You know, originally we started at 1144 pages. <laughs> In March, we went down to about 300. Now we're coming down to, you know, 100 around 100 pages. So we're making a lot of progress and making a smaller, shorter document. It's a much cleaner document, I feel like. I think so too. And I think it's easier for someone to use um, as well. Through the changes, uh, we had averaged about 19 edits per chapter. Um, and it took us about two hours per chapter to work through things. Um, the first hour of Thursday was used to a uh, Thursday of, sorry, the first hour of April 25th uh, was used to talk about the format and verbiage used across the document. So it was agreed that the strategy um, text should be in black font, so it's easier for someone to read. Recommended actions should be changed to potential actions, so that way there it's a little bit more understood that these are potential things that could occur. Uh, instead of listing every single stakeholder, it was recommended to just list one or two lead stakeholders, and they would be in charge of identifying the stakeholders who would work with them to do implementation. Um, and instead of saying time frame end, we would say time frame slash priority. And so we put that time frame period that was listed in the action or, or in the um, report with an acronym for that time frame period in the report. And if there's something that's identified as a priority by our elected officials, it would be noted with an asterisk or some sort of notation to let the public know this is a priority of the county. So this is an example um, showing Janet, so you can kind of see how um, it's very minor changes that we're working through as the group with the actual changes for things after the reformatting occurred. Um, and like I mentioned, we've gone through chapters one through five, and then chapter 11, we went through on May 2nd, um, and then we have chapters 6 through 10 that are going to be worked through uh, May 9th and 10th, um, which will have occurred by the time this is out in the public. So that's our update on how things are going with our workshops. Um, it's been um, a lot of a lot of work, but I think it's been very productive, and everyone, I think, is has a lot of uh, camaraderie from the experience.
And I will remind people, typically when Tyler is sharing slides with me for recording the radio show, I will put the video up on the station's YouTube channel. There's a Valley Today playlist on the station's YouTube channel. So you can go and watch and see some of what he's referencing. So if you're listening on the radio and you want to see it, or you're listening on the podcast, you can zip over to YouTube and hear and see all of this as well. Tyler, let's take a break. When we come back, let's get in the weeds a little bit on some of these changes and how a small change can make a big impact. Can we do that in the next segment? For sure. We're going to do all that. When we come back, we are on the screen today with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner. We meet up every single month to talk about Shenandoah 2045. That is Shenandoah County's comprehensive planning process. We're going to come back and do more of that in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. We are on the screen today with Tyler Hinkle. He is Shenandoah County's planner. We talk every single month about Shenandoah 2045. That is Shenandoah County's comprehensive planning process. Tyler, in the first segment, you walked us through several slides from the workshops that you've done already. We're recording about a week and a half in advance, so you still have two more that are coming after we've recorded, but Let's see, that are coming. After we recorded, but um, before the airing of the episode. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yes. Never mind. I'm just going to take all that out. <laughs> that, that was, my brain could not gravitate to that. So you've got a couple more workshops that you're going to be doing in the next few days. We, of course, are recording in advance. So all of that will have happened by the time that people are listening on Monday, May 20th. Are there things that have stood out to you as the group has gotten back together to tweak some of these things? One of the things that stood out to me was semantics. We were talking a little bit during the break on the difference, I feel like, say, moving from recommended to potential because potential means you could whereas i feel like recommended means you should and those are two totally different things when you're talking about a plan that has this kind of reach for sure and you know that was the intent you know when you know we as a group wrote this document was uh you know it's not intended to be um legal code you know legal code is very binding it requires you to do these things and if you don't there's consequences the plan is intended to be very uh, supportive um, and guiding. So, you know, if a staff member um, joins the county in a new role and finds out, you know, these are the things that they're assigned to do, uh, their departments to do um, for the plan, we don't want them to feel like, you know, they're going to be chastised uh, because they've now walked into it. We want them to have a guiding idea of how you could actually implement that. Because um, a lot of times in comprehensive plans, there are a lot of, um, as you had said, you know, high in the sky ideas uh, with little to no actual idea of how that could be implemented on the ground. And so a lot of times those plans fail because everyone's lost or you feel scared. And that's exactly what we want to avoid. We want to have a supportive environment for all of our implementers so that the plan is implemented. Um, and in 20 years, we're talking about new ideas and not saying, you know, we really should just redo everything we did in that, you know, 2045 plan because you never did anything. I would imagine as someone who has to edit this radio show and there are probably on average, so you figure I do five shows a week, four weeks out of the month. There are probably 25 to 30% of those shows that are much longer than the airtime I'm allowed on the radio. So I have to do a fair amount of editing to, and determine what's really important. What do I really think that my guest wanted to be on the radio? And what do I think my guest would be okay with if it was only on the podcast? Editing is hard. Not just editing audio, but just editing information is very, very difficult. It's probably more complicated in some ways than coming up with those ideas in the first place. Oh, for sure. I mean, in some ways, yes. I, I, I think that you can easily get stuck on not knowing what you're going to put into a document. So it's a little easier for us to cut and try to keep thinking if we miss something. I think we we all feel like we've covered everything in the plan. It's just making sure it's concise enough so that it's digestible. Um, but no, there's been a lot of aspects that we have to kind of ask, you know, is this similar? You know, previously there might be 
you know, let's say like five strategies related to zoning. Um, I feel like that's an easy example I always give under one goal, but they were broken up by objectives. So now that they're all under you know, the goal instead of per objective, we can now start to consolidate those and say, study these zoning aspects and then list them out instead of saying, study this zoning aspect, next strategy, study this, you know. So I think some of that stuff has been pretty useful in, in identifying aspects that maybe are a little too um, in the weeds with some of the details um, that, you know, that graph that came out in March and, and November will always be available um, for some former staff member to go back and look at. Um, but it doesn't need to be in that final document because the final document is meant to be concise and just hit the highlights of what's to be done and how to do it. And you're right. Sometimes it's really hard when you're in it, when you've been in those weeds for several years trying to figure it all out. And you've been on the front lines with community engagement. You've been on the front lines with the CAC trying to put it down on paper. It's really hard to take a step back. And even recognize sometimes that you're duplicating yourself because in your head you're thinking these are two separate things, but really they're related enough that they don't have to be two separate things. For sure. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, um, you know, the, I think the best example of that, you know, we had some conversations with CAC members and they had said, you know, when we, we first started writing the document, they were very supportive of the idea of listing the same aspect across multiple chapters. So it might be in the ag chapter, it might be in the recreation chapter, it might be in the transportation chapter, and it's the same statement across the board. Well, now seeing how long the document became because of that, they said, well, I think I was wrong. You know, I think that we need to put it in one place and if someone needs to see it, they know it's there and if anything, we can reference it. But we don't need to repeat the same verbiage over and over again. And that's also helped with cutting down aspects. Oh yeah, that's how you ended up with 1,100 pages. <laughs> And that speaks, too, to the fact that even if I were a Shenandoah resident, and I always joke with you that I consider myself Shenandoah County adjacent, I'm not going to open a document online or print, for heaven's sake, and you're not going to have printed copies of a 1,100-page document at your office. It's just so overwhelming that nobody's even going to want to make the effort. And that defeats the whole purpose of the plan and the community being involved in creating the plan. No, for sure. And that I think that um, even though we heard across the board, there's no magic page number. One of the members after I think the second session said, I, I know we all said there's no magic page number, but it's funny that we all pick, you know, the version that's edited to have the shortest amount of pages. Um, and, you know, I, I think if it wasn't in that format, it would be much more difficult to go through as a group uh, or use an individual, you know, reading the document. I think now it's very easy to say, okay, here's this goal. Um, what all is related to that goal? And you can see it all at once. You don't have to flip through, compare pages. Um, so I think we've, we've achieved a lot with that accessibility. Um, and then for semantics, too, going back to what you mentioned, uh, another big semantic we always heard was... Um, you know, certain verbiage, like using the word will. Um, so, you know, it might, might be best to say will support or will encourage. Um, that way there, again, we're, we're trying to come off as, you know, guiding and supportive and, and aspiring for the county, not, um, you know, a hammer um, to try and, you know, catch someone for, you know, making a mistake. We're trying to, you know, inspire you to um, make that county that we all want to be. Well, and again, this is a plan. This isn't a court document. This isn't, uh, uh, you know, you're filling out, uh, uh, I always call them blue sheets because I have a friend who's an attorney. And so I, she had ingrained that. But this is, this is a plan. It's not supposed to be this legal document, though it is in a way, but that's not how it's supposed to be written to begin with. For sure. And, you know, we have a, an attorney who's on uh, our group, so who's able to easily pick out those aspects that, you know, at, 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 from a legal perspective and say, you know, if you're looking at this, this is, you know, a little, little difficult, very restrictive. So we may want to have this written so that we're still capturing the intent, but not coming off as uh, very restrictive or, or trying to enforce someone to do doing this. 
Um, it also and, speaks to the diversity of the CAC members. I asked you during the break when we were talking originally about semantics, did you have an English teacher that was in the room? And you said, yes, as a matter of fact, we did. So it's incredible to me that the CAC members are from all walks of life. I think that's important for residents to understand and realize too. It's not just people who are doctors and lawyers. These are people that do all sorts of things and they're able to bring their skill sets to the table to complete a project like this. For sure. Yeah. And we have, we have someone um, who does tutor, they do English and, and things, but a lot of the edits honestly come from just regular community members, you know, farmers or um, business owners who are on the committees. Um, and they've been, a, they help provide a perspective that you typically won't have because you're, you know, you're, you're stuck in working on the project. And so you don't look at it from an outside perspective. So I think it's been super helpful, uh, across the board for staff. And then the CEC members who wrote those chapters, you know, being in the room with someone who is reading their chapter from an outside perspective and giving them feedback and understanding, you know, this isn't a personal attack or a personal concern on, on you as an individual. This is just trying to make sure what you've written is adequately captured and understood when someone reads it. Do you expect the workshops where you're working on chapter six through 10 to go very similarly to the ones that you've already done, making similar tweaks, changing language and verbiage? Do you think they're all going to go pretty much the same way? I think so. Um, and, and you will see what direction we're given. Um, so I'm sure in our June uh, episode will give an update as to if there's any more workshops or what the next steps are. Um, but you know, we kind of expect you know the same same folks who have been coming to them. We can't we we'll have a couple new individuals depending on what's being talked about. Um, but it's generally the same group, um, and I think they kind of got a good flow working through everything. And this is a process. So, it, I mean, I joked with you, I think a couple of months ago when you had the first final draft done. Okay, so you're done. <laughs> and you looked at me like, no, <laughs> we're, we're done uh, writing the original piece, but now is where the real work begins because you've got to work on the actual document that you have now created. This, this is a process and it's going to take some time. For sure. And we have a very active board and, and planning commission. You know, some, some localities will hire that. Uh, consultant or that contractor who will write the document for them. Um, and, you know, you might get a couple of tweaks or edits, but because you're in a contract, you can only make so many changes until you have to, you know, pay more money for that individual. Um, because, um, you know, we're lucky to have the staff we have and having um, the board members and, and planning commission and CDC as active as they are, you know, we're having a very open, iterative conversation on things. Um, so this is, you know, this in itself, too, what's happening with these workshops is not common. It's not very common to see board members, planning commission members. This involved this much wanting to own the process. Um, so, you know, that's a, a, a kudos to them for, for the work they're putting in. What do the public have access to at this stage of the game? So currently, um, right now, we just have the March 7th document out. Um, once we finish through our workshops, all of the edits will be published. Uh, we're hoping to have that out by our June planning commission meeting. Um, we want to kind of get through the rest of the workshops. Um, and I'm kind of on crunch time, too, with getting the edits done for the workshops. And then I got to go and do the edits from the workshops. So... And then you've got a holiday, a three-day holiday jammed in between all of this stuff. <laughs> so yeah, I, um, I don't envy you. Those are what's out there. Of course, the agendas and everything from those meetings are all out. Um, but we're hoping to work through the rest of the workshops this month and then have that new version that was jointly edited by all the three groups out um, early June. And that's likely what we'll cover during our conversation for the June radio show. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, did we cover everything that you wanted to? Yeah, I think so. Well, thank you for giving me an update. It is impressive. I, you know, I say this at the end, I think of almost every show, and I'm not saying it just because I feel like I have to, but it really, really is impressive. Just having 
being able to be a part of this and watch how month to month to month things have changed and grown and disappeared and come back and been tweaked. It, it really is a cool experience, but that's me on the outside looking in. That's not me sitting in your office or your supervisors or planning commission or CAC members who are in those weeds. I'm coming along with the lawnmower. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. So you get to kind of get the high level view of how everything's going. But I appreciate you taking the time every month to do this with me. This has been great. No, thanks for having us on. Thanks for letting us give an update on how things are going with our workshops. I will be back tomorrow for Tourism Tuesday, Luray Page County edition. So meet me back here for that just a few minutes after noon.